Before I get into the video, I just want to give my thanks for nearly a thousand subs and all the support you guys have shown in each video. Y'all the best. And to celebrate this milestone, I'll be doing a giveaway soon, so stick to the end of the video if you want to learn how to participate. Okay, back to the video. Today, I'll be talking about A1 Tanabe Astral, or Dark One Tanabe for short, the new structure to be released with the upcoming Fallen Star update. Not to be confused with the current A1 Tanabe Nightblade, who is a physical assault structure, A1 Tanabe Astral is mainly a dark damage assault structure. So, if you don't want to miss any future guides like this, don't forget to subscribe and drop a like, and if I make any mistakes, or I forget to mention something, I'll stick it in the pinned comment below. Alright, let's get into it. One Tanabe Astral is a base A rank assault structure that deals mainly dark type damage and is the first assault structure for this damage type to be introduced into the game. This video will cover One Tanabe Astral's skills, passives, ascensions, playstyle, I'll give some gameplay tips, cover his weapons, builds, synergies, and my overall pull and build recommendations. And I'll leave timestamps in case you want to jump to a specific topic. Getting into One Tanabe's kit, his basic attack string deals physical damage in melee range, and after you dodge or use a red orb, you can activate a dash back passive that deals more physical damage. His ultimate lets him ground pound enemies, dealing dark damage in an AoE. And his QTE lets him pull off a shadow clone technique, dealing dark damage to a target. The way that his core passive works is that basically after any 3 orb ping, using a red orb afterwards will activate a multi-hit attack dealing dark damage, and he also gains increased dark damage on his basic attacks for a brief period, as marked by the depleting bar below. The dash back passive also gains increased dark damage, and another way to trigger this core passive is to use any 3 orb ping on a different character, and then switching into Dark Wantanabe to perform a red orb to trigger the same effects as stated earlier. As for his blue orb, one Tanabe pulls the fast one on the enemy, teleporting behind them and dealing physical damage. But if it's a 3 orb ping, it does dark damage instead of physical. For his yellow orb, one Tanabe does a ballerina twirl of death, dealing physical damage. And of course, if it's a 3 orb ping, the physical damage is converted into dark damage. And for his red orb, one Tanabe does physical damage in the cone in front of him. And if it's a 3 orb ping, it becomes dark damage instead. For one Tanabe's leader passive, all members get increased dark damage and the soul structures get increased attack. As for Ascensions, at S rank, he can level his class skill for more damage, up to 20%. At double S, he deals 10% more damage to enemies hit by the blue orb for 4 seconds. At triple S, he deals 10% more damage to enemies affected by his dash back attack. And at triple S plus, he gains 20% more damage after proccing his own core passive. Wantanabe Astral is played as a dark damage DPS, and although his abilities and core passive may seem a little bit complicated on paper, once you get the hang of him, the combat rotation is pretty smooth and fluid. Since it's a character that depends on 3 orb combos for the dark damage conversion, saving your orbs for 3 orb pings, or less with matrix instead of spamming them, is a no-brainer. This also means that like Alpha and A Karenina, he usually wants to be swapped in later rather than being the first to enter the field for the extra orbs, and that can make triggering his core passive a lot easier. Putting your primary 4 Da Vinci support on your red orb slot is best since you need to proc the red orbs for the core passive anyways, and with the selectable leader feature that should be implemented with the upcoming update, Setting Wantanabe as a leader will provide you with the best damage for his current team comps consisting of S-Kami and a field of support. So if we put this together, we get our ideal combat rotation. Starting first by using a 3 orb ping on your current on-field character, then switching into Dark Wantanabe who should have a red orb to trigger the core passive, and then basic attacking on him until the shadow buff form is over as indicated by the bar, and then proccing Matrix to burn 3 orb pings to deal as much burst dark damage as possible, while proccing Da Vinci with QTEs, and then while he's buffed, using his ultimate to end the combat rotation. As for his weapons, the 4 star weapon, the Hunting Blade, is decent with an alright passive, but eventually you want at least a 5 star weapon, the Stone Heart, for the increased stats. And his signature 6 star weapon, the I don't know how to pronounce that, adds increased base stats as well as additional damage and dark damage on his core passive. And obviously it's his best in slot and strongest option. But I will leave a timestamp going over in detail on the weapon pull recommendations in my recommendations section of the video since I know some of you are curious about that. And the other 6-star weapon, the Soul Ripper, once Nobby Nightblade's signature weapon, is just copium and it's not really that useful since the passive adds physical damage and not dark damage, making it kind of irrelevant for once Nobby Astral. As for builds for 5-star memories, 4-piece Ike is the go-to option, but you can probably run 2-piece Ike along with 2-piece Ive as well. But this shouldn't matter as much because during the Fallen Star event, you should be able to easily obtain his signature 6-star memory set, the 4-piece Baron, which was made for dark type damage dealers and should be his main set no matter what. As for a 2-piece set, you have some options. You can run 2-piece Darwin for more damage, 2-piece Kadi for more spammable ultimates, or even 2-piece Einstein for some elemental shred. 
You could also run two-piece Hana as well, but it's a lot more conditional than the other options, so I don't really recommend it. As for the memory's position, you have to run Baron in the bottom row no matter what. Otherwise, you lose out too much on the base stats. And the two pieces can occupy any two slots on the top row. So, with all that being said, do I recommend pulling or building Dark Watanabe Astral? Well, the Fallen Star event should give a free copy of Dark Watanabe, not his shards, but the actual character himself. So after you get him from the event, it's up to you to choose to pull him as the A-rank selectable raid up from the standard banner, which is a feature that should be implemented with this update, with the blue cost tickets that you get from the daily logins and bounties, but note that you will need to pull him at least twice to get enough shards for S-rank, which will probably dig into your black card income, so the decision is ultimately up to you and how much black cards you have. Wantanabe Astro actually used to be an S-rank, but the CN players complained that the rate of S-rank releases was too fast, so Kuro reverted him to a base A-rank structure, but kept his base S-rank stats on him, making him much stronger than the other A-ranks. So if you're wondering why there's two A Wantanabes, and why this Wantanabes kit is so complex, that's the reason. He's also the only dark damage type assault structure until S Luna much later down the line, so he'll be the key DPS for dark teams for at least 6 months, along with the current S Kamui as the dark tank, hence why he was so sought after with the selector ticket and beginner banner pulls, and A Vera Rosen, who comes a few months after the Fallen Star update as the dark type support and waifu. So basically, he's a good investment and opens up dark teams. And the reason I don't recommend physical tanks like A Kamui or B Nanami or even Isla is because elemental damage ignores armor, so these supports won't be necessary if Dark Watanabe is played correctly. And S Kamui straight shreds dark resistance, so that's why he's there. On the topic of elemental damage, make sure you focus on the bottom row for the attack, especially since you cannot crit on elemental damage, negating the crit from the top row. And also since Vera is a bit ways off, any live should fill the support role fine in the meantime. And I know some of you are wondering, since A1 Tanabe is the primary dark DPS and formerly an S rank, should you pull his 6 star signature weapon? And my answer for that is no, and that's because since he gets replaced by Luna down the line, and you won't have enough black cards in time as a light spender for the upcoming S rank and their signature weapon, and for free to play, summoning for a 6 star weapon is just out of the question, a 5 star weapon is just good enough. And if you're a whale, or if you hyper out sacked alpha and her weapon, then it's really up to you. If you found this video informative, drop a like, a dislike if you didn't, subscribe for future PGR content and guides, and if you have any further questions, drop it down below in the comments, I do read and respond to them all. And to celebrate nearly hitting a thousand subscribers, I'll be hosting a giveaway for monthly packs for a couple winners through the giveaways channel at my discord at discord.io slash ajanautomino. And these videos take a lot of time and effort to make, so I really do appreciate all the support. Y'all the best. I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace, late.